the founders of Wired magazine recently, not in a formal environment, about his well-publicized views on screens in particular and tech in the classroom. And I was quite surprised because his view of the optimum number of screens in a classroom, I was imagining Minority Report here in 2020, his view of the optimum number of screens in a classroom was naught. Didn't want to see that. He found that very worrying. I don't have his theories to share with you now, but I just wonder your views about where this is going and how we tread that line. It must be on the minds of lots of parents and so on. Predictions, John and, uh, and Angela as well. I'm kind of with him. Um, in, a, in a flipped model classroom, you know, and, and you guys have heard me talk about this a little bit, but um, so imagine a traditional pyramid of the textbook, the lecture, and the discussions. And, uh, and imagine that both the textbook and the lecture are being turned into rich media modular content, right? So there's no reason to get everybody together at the same time to hear a person talking, right? So you take that into a video, but nobody wants to watch an hour-long video, so you start carving it, and you make it more interactive and collaborative and, and, uh, and adaptive, and, and ditto the textbook. And so by the time you walk into class, You've already seen the lecture. You've already seen the basic, you know, kind of kind of thing you need to see. Mm -hmm. Now it's time to discuss. Now it's time to problem solve. Mm. But and presumably that discussion could have happened in your bedroom. Well, it could, and you could ima imagine, and and we do uh, the online courses. I've created the online graduate programs. Um, it's completely online, mm -hmm. and so uh, imagine a screen that has your nine classmates on it and your professor, and you're all just talking. OK. What about what about panelists, John? But whether you're on the screen or in person, you're just talking. Mm. And that conversation doesn't need screens. It doesn't need technology. It needs people who are relatively informed walking in, diving into the issues together. And so, mm. and so when you finally do get together synchronously, why would you need the Technology. Well, it's an interesting question, isn't it? Angela, where, where are you on this? Will the classroom of the future have a screen surround? Will it be barren of all tech? I think it depends on which age group you're talking about. Okay. Um, I actually think that, just generally speaking, any kind of technology is really, if you're talking about the classroom, it's dependent on the teacher. It's really, you, there's, you know, computers have been around for a long time. Oftentimes, they're just in the back of the classroom, not being utilized. So, but you can have very effective teaching without that technology. Yeah, but so is it something you take a view on? Something you'd like to see? Perhaps a laptop for every child in this country, or indeed America? I really think it's up to the teacher. I don't. I don't, I don't really. Well, think well, it's well, really well, well in, in what sense would a single teacher know better than some of the cleverest minds? Research what works best, the best practice. If we discovered that. Wouldn't we point that out to these teachers? Would you really devolve it to a well, if you're talking person about best just practices, starting in a workplace? If you're talking about best practices, I mean, on the teacher level, it's actually happening at the professional development for the teacher. So sharing of best practices happens before they even walk into the Right. Class. I guess my point is, and Sherry, feel free to come in on this, if we discover that teaching children their times table is best done using screens, mobiles, laptops, and we might say, through the government, this should happen in every school. Are you still saying that the teacher should be able to say, no thanks, not here? If we can prove that, and I actually think that we were talking about this earlier, I think it's hard to measure. I, I don't think that there's actually, um, it, it's, a difficult, it's a difficult connection to make that. Does the technology actually make the teaching better, the educational experience better, or is it actually the ways in which the teacher utilizes the technology? Okay, Sherry, like briefly, and then I'll come back to you, John. Um, Speak up a tiny bit, Sherry, here. Yep. Oh, there's a mic. Oh, there's a mic if you want to use it. There you go. Um, Thanks, Sherry. I also think that there are ways of monitoring now with data what is more effective. So I think of here there's this thing called the National Pupils Database, and you can set up, you know, literally randomized controlled trials and see this treatment, this teacher is not using this, this teacher is, and you can see what the impact is a couple of years le later. And I think that it will be using those tools that be able to inform us as to what best practice is and what works the best. 
And I love the fact that we will be clearer in the future on, on what is the most effective. You blend that with you know learning and seeing how they're using it on the technologies that they are using technologies, and we'll know what the answer is. Okay, well, well, Crystal, you must have a view on this about how schools should be adopting. Yeah, no, I, well, I would a uh, little bit um, you know off that 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 line of thinking. But what comes up for me is how it is not losing sight of of the equity of all learners getting access to. Um, the resources and that they need to, to learn, and so, from you know, I think what what drives me is a is is how does that student who's sitting in a really underserved community who doesn't have all of the things that you know my kids could go I, it doesn't even matter where my kids go to school right like they're they're going to be fine but um, what about the kids who don't have all the support systems that my kids have and I think that what I get aggravated and the hair on the back of my neck stands up when I hear people say no screens or you know have a philosophy of like is, is maybe, maybe that's great for my kid who has tons of screens everywhere else, but I care about the kid who's sitting in inner city Detroit who, you know, who doesn't have access to um, the say, same educational resources that, and, and it's not because he, he, you know, that child has any less capabilities than mine.